Let's get back now to the Paris Climate Conference and join our environment editor, Nick Clark. Nick. Laura, yes, thanks very much indeed. You know, the uh, diversity of people that you meet at these conferences is quite astounding with all their expertise and knowledge. And we have with us now a real gem, uh, naturalist and broadcaster Sir David Attenborough. Welcome to Al Jazeera. Thank you. Thank you for your time. First of all, tell us why you're here. <clears throat> well, I'm here to support a project called the Global Apollo Project, uh, which is designed to bring the best scientists in the world together to solve the problems of distributing, gathering and storing power from non-polluting sources, that is say from the sun eventually. And to do so at a price which undercuts how much it costs to produce energy from coal. So that at, a, at a, a blow, you simply stop carbon being polluted by leaving the coal and the oil in the ground. And that applies to nations of all kinds. Developed, undeveloped, everywhere. Right. But zero carbon is a big issue here, of course, and they're talking about possibly getting into the text for the by the year 2050. Do you think it's realistic? I think that the, the global uh, Apollo project is totally realistic. Uh, the, the suggestion is that if you have the coordinated the scientific brains of the world to ro work out a roadmap to see what the problems are, to divide up the problems and work them. To do that within 10 years, if you can put a man on the moon in 10 years, you, the world scientists, ought to be able to solve these problems. You know, only one five thousandth proportion port of the energy that comes onto the, from the sun every day. If you actually were harnessed that, you would provide the whole of humanity with all the power it needs. That's what I, I don't believe that human. That's beyond human uh, possibility. That's absolutely extraordinary, isn't it? Now you've, in your lifetime, for a lifetime, have travelled the world, you've seen all its beauty and diversity and, and natural wonder. How serious, I know you're, you're not a specific expert in this, but how, how serious do you think uh, the state of the planet is right now? And oh, what very serious. Very serious indeed. Uh, I mean, you know, we are moving up towards that two degree thing. Two degrees rise in the temperature of the oceans will kill a whole proportion of the fish that we know now. They won't be able to survive. Uh, the coral reefs will disappear. A high proportion of the human population depends upon fish and will do so more and more and more uh, for, their, for their sustenance. And so uh, the dangers just facing the oceans are, are really appalling. Now you interviewed the US President Barack Obama a little while ago. What impression uh, did you get from him about his commitment to change? He's going to be speaking here in just over an hour, as you know. I believe that he is totally, that he, in his heart, he is totally with the proposition. And I'm not an expert on American politics, as I'm sure tangled as any other nation's politics. And how you achieve these things is a matter for specialist politicians. But I'm quite sure that the President Obama wishes to solve this climate problem. Finally, very briefly, if you would, uh, for countries like India, who want to move on and bring billions out of poverty, it's very difficult for them to say to agree to it. Not at all. The, the proposition I'm putting forward actually applies to India just as anybody else. It means that Indian, India has power that's very, very cheap, much cheaper than it is now. All right, so David, we'll leave it there. I think perhaps you should address the conference. You might convince a lot of people yourself. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, that is Sir David Attenborough here in Paris. It's back to you.